exposed risk, cash investment, leverage, the fact you don't own it. These are just some of the reasons you might want to consider owning your house outright and cash it in. In this video, I'm going to be talking through all of that and more. And by the end of it, you're going to be able to decide for yourself whether to leverage or buy your house outright in cash. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Jamie York. I'm a property investor, have been for around a decade now. And I put this channel together to help you build up your portfolio, get the right mindset, talk about growth and make sure you've got the right business focus to build it out. So if you're interested in that, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you want to do me a favor and help other people view this video, make sure to smash the like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm help push this out. Okay, so I want to go through just a couple of things. So first of all, risk. So if you own your house outright, and what this means is you own it in cash, hard cash, then there are no risks to ownership. And what I mean by that is obviously you have your ongoing liabilities, like if something goes wrong in the property, if there's a drainage problem, all of that, that comes with owning a property in general. But what I mean is if you have lending on the property, you don't actually own the property. I'm going to say that again. If you have lending on the property, you don't actually own the property. Okay. The bank owns the property. They have a charge on the property. They can do what they want. So often what happens is when you get lending, you get these 1000 pages worth of contracts with all this sort of small print as you're going through. Who reads all of it? hardly any of us, right? But in those contracts, there's a load of clauses in there that will break down each situation that can go wrong where they can pull the property off unless you pay it in full. Okay, so a good example of this is coverage. And coverage, especially with buy-to-let properties, is all around rentals and things like that. But separate from that, it's coverage of the asset value. So for example, when you buy a property, let's say you put down 20%, so you've got 80% on a mortgage. Just as an example, you can do more or less dependent on your strategy. But what if you bought that property, let's say a 100,000 pound property, you put down 20K, you've got 80 grand mortgage, and then the 2007 recession comes and the property is worth 75,000 pounds. What can you do as a mortgage provider? Well, Mortgage Express, what they did is start calling on mortgages and saying, unless you can top up the amount you've got in, we're going to take those properties. And so a load of people, even though they could still pay their mortgage, they weren't having any issues, were getting their properties repossessed and pulled from them during the last recession. So there is an added component of risk if you have lending or leverage or a mortgage debt on your property. The next thing to factor in is the utilization of money. Okay, now what I mean by this is can you actually utilize these funds elsewhere? So something I'm really keen on is I like leverage, I like debt if it's used in the right way and mortgages are some of the cheapest debt you will ever get anywhere, okay? So if I go to lend money off of my bank, I might get 12%, 15%. If I want to go in the overdraft, sometimes if you go over it, it's like 20 quid a day, right? Um, even if you've only gone 100 quid over an unarranged overdraft. If you get a credit card, it's like 29 point something APR. Whereas a mortgage, you're looking at around 2 to 5% dependent on where you're at right now. So if I'm able to make that work for me in another area, what I'm not talking about is holidays, cars, things like that. I'm not talking about liabilities. I'm talking about assets that you can take on to help you move forward. So say for example, I end up going out and buying a property in cash, let's say 200,000. Whereas if I got a mortgage on that, and I'll break this down now because it really shows the power of it. So let's say three examples, my famous diagrams coming up again. So let's say I buy this 200,000 pound house. If I buy 200,000 cash, we're going to ignore list of fees, broker fees, all of that, just to keep this simple. Okay. If I buy 100% cash, what then happens is you can buy one property, right? You get one rental out of it. And let's say you're getting 2K in cash, you're getting 2,000 pounds in, yay. Just to keep it as simple as possible. If I do 50% loan to value, meaning 
I buy a property, but I get 100 grand equity, the cash in there, and 100 grand mortgage, I can buy two properties. So now I've got two properties worth 200 each, okay? Because I put 100 grand in each of them. This means I've got two times rentals. So now I'm getting 4,000 each month. Now, the thing is, if you look at the mortgage, on here there isn't any so let's forget all of the other costs you are getting your two thousand pound in with this because there's a hundred grand mortgage on each you are going to have costs involved in that okay so most mortgages especially with buy to let they're going to be interest only so if you've got a let's say three percent which is very reasonable on that on the two hundred thousand that you are lending each year that is going to end up costing you six thousand pounds with me? Okay, cool. So it's gonna be 500 pounds a month. So again, you're gonna to have to deduct your costs off of that, but definitely more than this side. Stage three, let's say you do a 75% loan to value. Now, 75% loan to value is very typical of buy to let properties. So now what that means is for each property, you're putting 50 grand in, but you still got your 200,000, right? So now you're going to get four £200,000 properties. Now, again, I really want to push forward. You won't actually get four. You've got stamp duties, legals, all of that. But I just want to get a very basic uh, overview. So now you've got four rentals. Um, you've got four times the two grand, which is a crazy amount of money, 8,000. And you've got costs coming out as well. So 1,000 and more okay but the point is that even with the leverage in there you are going to be making more on a net basis so it's all down to how you can utilize the money otherwise if you're not interested in any of this which you're watching this channel about property investment so i can near guarantee you are but if you're not able to utilize it and all you're going to do is spend the money elsewhere then there's no utilization rate. There's no opportunity cost, which in economics is about 5%. There's no um, opportunity cost or risk. So just keep it in cash because there's no need to it. But if you can utilize it at more than 5%, you're going to want to do this, especially once we get to capital appreciation, which I'm going to go through in a moment. So let's jump into capital appreciation right now, in fact. Now, I am a big fan of leverage if it's the right tool. I don't believe in over leveraging yourself. I don't think you should leverage yourself to the nuts right now. But here's where it comes down. Now, remember, everything is accentuated or amplified, which means that when there's a problem, the problem gets ringed. So you have to realize that in property and everything, risk is reward. Okay, now typically, if you've got 5% risk, you would expect 5% reward, okay? Now, what this means is, if you've got a good tenant that has got 10 years worth of, you know, it's in a really great area, you're attracting the right people, you are gonna get a lower return because there's lower risk there. In the same way, if you've got a property in a shit area, being blunt about it, you're gonna get the property for a lot less, you're taking a lot higher risk, your reward will be a lot higher. The game of investment is being able to gain the system, right? So what you're looking for is that 5% risk property giving you a 7% return, for example. Now, this is important to factor in because if you over leverage yourself and there is that correction in the market, you will end up losing money. So let me just go through these examples of how it's amplified on the upside. So sure you know this already since doomsday book was written there and i've gone through this so many times the average price of property has doubled every 10 years okay but let's not go crazy with that let's go with five percent growth a year okay very reasonable so scenario one scenarios one we've bought it in cash okay so remember the capital growth we'll put this growth at 5%, very reasonable in property, 200,000 pounds. It's a decent area in that. How much money do you make? Well, it's gone up to 10,000 or 210,000, right? So 5% of 200,000, that, okay. Scenario two, not only are you making more money, but again, bear in mind, you've got the risks of the mortgage, but now you've got two properties. 
Okay, and the reason for that is you've done 50% loan to value, if you remember the example. So now you've got two properties. The total value is now 400,000 because you've got two of these properties there. So 5% on that, yes, 20,000. You're getting where this is going, right? Scenario number three, if we bring this up a little for you. Number three, remember this is the 25% loan to value. So now you're getting four properties. So the value of these four properties is 800,000. Now again, do you have 800,000 equity? No, you've got debt on it, which you're facilitating and paying down, um, or you're paying the interest with the rental income, but your capital growth on that 800,000 pound portfolio at a very modest 5% is 40,000 pounds. Now, is that in cash? No, it's in equity in the property. But what you can then do is you can do portfolio reviews, okay? So let me just go through an example, and you can tell my answer is, if you can utilize your mortgage, utilize your mortgage. Utilize debt if you are gonna make it work for you. Now you need to be savvy with this, but let me just go through the real power of this, okay? So I suggest if you've only got 200,000, which is a great amount of money, by the way, I know a lot of people start with nothing, and you can use other people's money, but let's just go through a scenario. Five years time, Here's what happens, and this is how it amplifies, okay? So scenario one, two, and three. Now again, bear in mind we are starting with 200, 400, and 800,000. Here's what's gonna happen. So we're gonna have, let me just grab this so I don't screw this up. So if we go a five-year growth rate at 5%, okay? So we're gonna do 200,000 times 1.05, and we're gonna do it one, two, three, four, five times. Okay, it's not adding 10,000 pound each time because bear in mind the value goes to 210, and then you're doing 5% on that, okay? And I wanna show you how this amplifies over time. So 255,256. So you can see what we've added there is 55 grand, right? So if we go to the other one, now we do 400,000 times 1.05 and we go one, two, three, four, five years, we're at 510,512 pounds. We have added 110,000 pounds to our growth. Okay, now if we go to 800,000 times that by 1.05, 5% growth, and we go one, two, three, four, five, we've now got a portfolio value of 1.021 million pounds. We have made 221,000 pounds. So this is the most common, 75% leverage, which is 75% loan to value, meaning for a 200,000 pound property, you put in 50 grand. So here's what's happened. Over a five year period, you have on top of your 100, your 200,000, got more in capital growth over five years than the money you started with. That is the power of leverage. That is how crazy it is. So just to break down those numbers to make sure we are very clear, you started with 200,000, okay? You now have an added difference between 800 and that, 220, sorry, just writing that wrong. You have an added 221,000 pounds. So you have over doubled your equity position in just five years time. And here's the magic. What you now do, bear in mind of that, and this is where it might get confused, is 600,000 of that is a mortgage, okay? Because 75% of that. But what's gonna happen here is of this, 75% of that is you can now refinance. So you can refinance that at 75% loan to value in five years time. And you're gonna refinance that at 765,000, give or take. 
okay? What's going to happen is you're going to pay back that money first. So you're going to minus the 600,000 and you're going to have 165 cash and four properties ready to go again. And what are we going to do with this? Damn straight, we're going to buy three more 200k properties. They might be a bit more expensive at that point, right? Because we're going to leverage it. Because if we can get 75% loan to value, we're going to have 50 grand from each one. So my opinion with all of this is, should you buy your house in cash? Absolutely, okay? If you don't have a way to utilize the money, it's the cheapest money you're ever going to have out there. And we have this weird obsession that success, that's when success comes, right, in the UK, where if you've paid off your house and you own it outright, it's this weird sense of thing. For me, I don't care about paying off my house at all. I just don't. I've got no ambition to do it. Um, I don't really care about it. I want the money because I know I can make that money work really hard for you. And if you're following this channel, you are learning all of the ways where you can make that money work for you in the best way. So you're getting five, six, seven, ten plus percent annual return, which absolutely dwarfs what the mortgage companies are currently paying on their fixed mortgages. So find out what the mortgage will be and ask yourself, can I make that money work harder for me? And if the answer is an honest no, keep it in and pay down that mortgage. But don't get obsessed with doing it. It's not doing you any favors. Learn how to utilize the money as effectively as possible to build your portfolio, your growth, and your wealth over the long term. But hey, that's just one man's opinion. I am not a financial analyst. I'm not an IFA, this is not financial advice, but it's definitely what I would be doing in this scenario. So I hope you got a load of value from that. If you did, and especially if you're new to the channel and you wanna learn how to actually utilize this money you're now gonna have and make it work for you, make sure to hit the subscribe button, watch as many videos as you can to immerse yourself and learn how to invest from this. Make sure to hit the like button to help with the YouTube algorithm and leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts and what you would do and I'll do my best to reply to every single comment. And of course, I'll see you in the next video.